another video. I don't know if you guys can hear me that well, but we are out here trolling for bluefin tuna. I am with the Fin Finish Boys, and we are offshore. We have two rods out right now, uh, just trying to cover water. We saw our first spot of bluefin up popping around, so we dropped out some Mad Max. Let's see what happens. That was cool on the green stick, dude. I've never seen that thing yeah, get bit before. Rad. That was rad. It's just what? Wow. <laughs> Boots is, is this Hawaii? Nice. Um, <laughs> That's the big boy reel right there. Yeah, dude. <laughs> All right, first bite of the day was on the Mad Mac on the green stick. Brian likes to fish Hawaiian style. <laughs> there you go, good job, Uncle. Everyone's got to pitch in. Hey, get over oh, yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, there's the West End of Catalina. It is. Santa Barbara oh. Island right there. We're right in between the two. We're trolling for what, maybe 15 I minutes? I don't know. I wasn't able to wind there. Trolling troll for probably like 15, 20 minutes, just kind of looking for fish. We're seeing ones and twos kind of blowing up all over the place. Oh, it's, it's a lot. It's a little bit better. Oh. I don't know. Put it in the boat here if you want, but then you gotta be able to. Well, that's alright. Well, that's about a thousand to go. Yeah. <laughs> on the game. I think it was dunking some line. Oh, yeah, it's another, another one blew up right there. See them going? Yeah, look, they're right behind us. Oh, they're jumping. They're all blowing up. Keep swimming this way, I'll throw a popper at them. Yeah, it'll get bit. All right, we got fish kind of boiling all around the boat. No real foamers, just blowing up here and there, here and there underneath some birds, just outside of casting distance. So um, I was throwing the popper off the bow. This fish is almost straight up and down now. There you go. Oh, deep color. Slide for you. Yeah, we need to get rid of that for sure. Nice. On the board. 
good one. That's a nice one. Yeah. Thank you for your live fish. Woo! We're gonna eat every little bit of you, my friend. Oh, you're gonna have to That's why he was all squirrely. You see that? Yeah. He's all hooked. He's not hooked in the mouth. Thank you for your life, yeah. That's a good one. Nice work, guys. Both hooks in there, nice and deep like. Nice work, well done. Bro. Well done, Cap. It's a nice bluefin. We got a little uh, gentleman start today doing like a reverse day and a half. So we didn't leave the dock till like 10. Just got out to the zone to troll for what, 20 minutes? 20 minutes of trolling. Nice, what's that, 70 probably? All right. Let's do that again. All right, right behind you with the knife. All right, sorry to pull you guys away from the video, but I just wanted to take a second to let you know that I am a loan officer. Um, so if you guys are interested in buying a house, if you own a house and are interested in refinancing, or you just have general questions on, you know, things as simple as how to plan ahead if you are looking down the road to buying a house, um, let me know in the comments down below or shoot me an email at fluentmortgage at gmail.com. I'll also have that linked down below, but I would love to help you guys out. We can talk fishing and you know how to make all your, your home ownership dreams come true. But uh, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Back to the fishing. Again, I was actually just looking at this big kelp patty over here that had a bunch of birds on it, and then the green stick got bit again, the one that's way back there. On the Mad Mac, we saw him like blowing up on the surface. I don't know if the GoPro picked it up, but we are tight again. That was like 30 minutes in between bites on that one, right? Not bad at all. Yeah, I'll take that all day. One thirty. Only one thirty. Yeah. So we've been fishing for a total of like. Got, one hour at that, yeah. yeah Let's, say one hour. Let's go. Look at the mullet. Oh, yeah. Look at all the bait chasing. Isn't that cool? It's a moving kelp patty that can kind of hang out with. So we got the mullet down below the boat. Feel big as the other one, or same thing? Okay. Still hanging back here. We'll take that for sure. That was a good one, the last one. Yeah, I was we're like looking at. We're we were pulling up on some spots of breaking fish, but legitimately they're like 10, 15 pound little bluefin. So I didn't even throw a pop or at them, but it's crazy. The mixed grade fish in the zone right now is anywhere from that 10, 15 pound all the way up into those big 250 plus pounders. Pretty wild. It got heavier. No, that got heavier, didn't it? He just realized he was fucked. I think. I stopped walking him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's going yeah, he surface. Just, he just he just realized he was hooked right there. I see a line coming up sure. right there. Sometimes you'll see that fish come up and break the I'll surface. Put it behind you. you like that angle where you are there, boots? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I will say when you're trolling those Mad Max that far back, long. it'll wear you out just winding that line. Nice in. work, bro. <laughs> Let me hear that again, boots. Give it a <laughs> <laughs> Look at a boot. Oh, uh, you see it out there? Yeah. yeah. It looks better than this one. Yeah, it looks better. It's a little bigger. 
They sell out, bro. This, those things sold out. <laughs> yeah, I do the exclusive drops. Yeah. Pre-order, pre-order <laughs> only. This is a better one. Tr trigger price. Oh, this is a, this is this is a nicer fish here. Here, hold it. Getting squirrely. Getting squirrely. I'm probably better off on that. Another squirrely one. He's far away. Oh. We had like five feet to go before I could get him. That was weird how he came up. It's yeah, it's weird how he kind of yeah. floated. Yeah. He floated up. This is a, this is a nicer fish. I can't do it. Sorry, though. I can't do it. All right. Nice work, bro. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go, baby! Whoa! That was epic. Nice work. Good oh, work this one didn't even know he was hooked. No. For real. He was he was still very good. This is a bitter one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh yeah. That's an explosion you saw. That's a good one there. Stay leave him right there for a second. Woo! That's a good one there. Yeah. Whoa! Let's go! Let's go boots. This is a good one here, guys. Thank you for your Thank life. You. Every bit of you will get eaten. What a beautiful big Jeez. fish. We saw that blow That's up more as, soon like as, it, yeah, huh? as soon as that rod went off. We looked back there and saw him just. I tell you, that surface. green stick is just killing it. Yeah. All right, ready? Yeah. I'm just going to lay him down nice and soft. Dude, beautiful fish. Oh, wow. oh beautiful. Oh, look at that. Fish. Respect your catch right beautiful there. Beautiful fish, yeah. That's the biggest one of the season for us, man. Well, we just started fishing last week. <laughs> <laughs> but that's right. the biggest one of the season Everybody for us. Everybody, watch out. There is a knife up here. Oh, my God. It's so funny. <laughs> we, we were out once before. This was the biggest one of the season. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Let's see. I know you guys can't see it on the GoPro, but out right on the horizon there underneath those birds, there are tuna going absolutely nuts. So we have those two fish on board. One was like a 60, 70 pounder. The other one was over 100, probably like 125, 140-ish. Great size fish. Hoping to get a couple more of that size, but man, they are going nuts. Get a bumper All right. We're gonna do it. That's just bluefin being bluefin. It's crazy. We got two really good casts in there. And if you guys have ever gone bluefin fishing and cast it on foamers, you know as well as I do that sometimes they can be extremely picky. I mean, we had our poppers right in there. So maybe next time I'll throw something different, like a cold sniper or something. But um, I think we're going to see more of those fish up, up on the surface. Those were definitely smaller gray. Those look like those like 30, 40 pounders, but still fun to catch on the, the casting gear. Uh, we still have the two Mad Max out the back, so we're going to keep trolling around. Hopefully get another big one or see more fish up on top. Throw some lures at them.
there and it was like three seconds later we were tight baby! Right on cue. Woo! What's up? What's up? Uncle Lou again. I'm out of gear boys, I'm out of gear. This one's bigger. Oh, this is a good one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was so rad, wasn't was it, Adam? Bitchy, that was bitching. I go, was I like go right about <laughs> now, good, and like three seconds good. later, it came tight. That was awesome. Next time, I gotta start this thing. <laughs> were you, were you recording yeah, on yours? I was recording. Okay. <laughs> and that. again, I, what I tell you, we just make a sandwich and eat, and we're gonna Come get on, bit. Baby. He goes. Tanner just said to me, he goes, bro, let's just eat. We're gonna get bit right as we start eating. Look, <laughs> we're bit. Check this out. One bite out of my sandwich. Woohoo! We're tight again. Adam, it feels bigger than the last one. Yeah. You're probably ready, huh? You ready? Swap out? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Go ahead, Adam. Alright. We got the theme. Deep color. We got deep color. Oh, well, you had deep color. Oh, look at the rod tip. Look at the rod tip. Oh, look at the rod tip. Whoa! Actually, I want to go to the other side. Brian, you're gonna to come to this side? Yeah. Oh, you're already right here. Okay. You're here. Keep it down. Keep it down. Got him. Got him on. Uncle, you must be getting tired if you thought that one was bigger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of action going on over there. Yeah, like it's hard to tell until you get them right there. Nice work, so yeah. Put the right gear, right? Yeah. Bless them with your life. Thank you for your life, fish. Beautiful stuff. Let's get it right back out, guys. How cool is that, though? Three beautiful different grain fish. Yeah, all in the same, all in the same way. That's so cool. Same zone, same way. Beautiful stuff. Nice. Nice, beautiful, little smaller gray bluefin on the same bait in the same zone as all those other fish. This one came off that foamer. Looks like that one popped off. We saw the, the grade of fish jumping right there. It was that smaller 20, 30 pound stuff. 
Um, hoping we can stick can another big one though. Control, Brian. I got you. All right, while we are reeling that one in and resetting, again, this is the Mad Mac that we're using, 200 size. That's pretty standard size. Yeah, yeah that's, that's like the medium size. one. I fished the 160s and the, what's the next one up, like 240? Yeah. Something 240. like that. But a 200 size, looks like, do you run the stock hooks on it too? Oh, I usually use the BKK treble. Throw a treble on the back? Yeah. I mean, we're three for four with just the stock hooks today, so up to you guys if you want to throw a treble hook on the back. I know a lot of people do. Uh, troubles on both, one on the back. It's all personal preference at that point, but yeah, just trolling those bad boys around. Um, still waiting for some more foam to actually be up and stay up long enough for us to slide in on it and make some casts with the uh, the poppers and irons and all that fun stuff. But I mean, we're getting bit doing this, so why why change it up? Let it rip. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh man sorry guys Wait, i was changing the battery pack <laughs> yeah changing the battery pack on that one we just got bit again on the mad mac gopro star record oh my god that was crazy couldn't find the camera that was We're a good tight again this time we switched back up to the green stick bad mac awesome. combination what and it was, uh, it was pretty good fight I just wanted to take a second to give a big shout out to the Fin Fetish crew, uh, Captain Brian, for another epic trip. Uh, we did end up getting our limit of bluefin tuna. Uh, all that mixed grade stuff, which I, I thought was really cool, catching those smaller fish, medium grade fish, and we did get a couple of fish that were you know, over 100 pounds. But we caught them doing everything, trolling Mad Max, spreader bars, casting in the foamers. We got one big one on the kite. So I am gonna break this video up a little bit. Uh, the next video I'll do us, uh, you know, casting on those foaming fish and setting up a kite and catching that big kite fish. And then I'll do a video on the spreader bars um, just to kind of break it up for you guys so you can kind of learn from each technique and maybe apply that to your own fishing. But yeah, again, huge shout out to uh, Fin Fetish. If you guys are interested in booking a trip with them, I'll link their information down below. Uh, their website is finfetish.com. And uh, yeah, this is not just bluefin with them. They're great fishermen on you know the islands and local stuff, big yellowtail, white sea bass. Uh, I got my personal best halibut with them. So it's just always a good time. Brian always puts you on the fish. But yeah, stay tuned for the, uh, the cleaning and cooking part. Obviously back at the house now. Um, that was actually a super fun um, trip. It was my first tuna fishing trip of the season. So really stoked to get on all of those uh, different grades of fish. But before I get into cleaning one of those fish for you guys, I just wanted to kind of touch bases on that whole Mad Mac fishing thing. Um, it's definitely taken 
the bluefin fishing in our local waters by storm over the last few years. Um, and it's kind of something unique to the private boater in that you have to be able to ideally troll at like 12 to 15 miles an hour, somewhere in that faster zone, a little faster than a lot of the sport boats can control. Um, another important thing is having it way back behind the boat. Like you guys saw, um, the only one that kept getting bit was the one that was like a thousand feet behind the boat. So it is way back there. And Brian has a very unique uh, system on his boat with that green stick, which is something that kind of was developed in uh, Hawaiian fisheries but he's applied it to the Mad Mac fishing here, being able to get that line out of the water and get that lure way back there, um, away from the prop wash and boat wake noise and stuff like that because bluefin are notoriously boat shy. Um, yeah, anyways, so like you guys saw, that one that was way further back got bit every single time. The one in the rod holder was also very far back, just didn't get picked up at all, which is interesting to me, something to kind of pay attention to, but um, yeah. You guys also saw that Brian runs just the stock hooks on there. A lot of people have complained about those stock hooks having a very small uh, barb and that the hook up to land ratio is kind of poor. But like you guys saw in the video, ours was pretty solid. I think we only pulled the hook on one fish, which is which is pretty good. But these are my personal Mad Max here. I have swapped out that back hook with a treble hook just for a better chance of getting more than one hook in that fish. Um, I've seen people put treble hooks on both as well. I haven't seen a, a difference in doing that. I've personally never tried it, but again, that's one of those personal preference things. If you guys notice that you're hooking fish and losing them and you're running the stock hooks or with the treble hook, just kind of fine tune them however you want. Um, Brian was fishing that 200 size. So this is that 200 size. As you can see, I've dragged this one around quite a bit. Um, it's got a lot of that paint chewed off of it, hook rash, all that fun stuff. Um, so there's that 200 size. I've also gotten bit on the 160 size. That one right there. Same thing, replace that back hook with a nice strong treble hook. I think it's BKK hook. Um, but yeah, that 160 size also gets bit. I've caught um, a couple fish over 100 on that one. So decent sized fish eat that little bit smaller one as well. But this is that, the 240 size. So yeah, we got the 160, 200. Looks like they go up by 40. This is that bigger 240 size. I do have a few of these. Obviously this one's still fresh and clean. Just swapped out that back hook right there. Haven't tried this one yet. Um, so I don't know if this one gets bit. I was told by some reliable sources that this one also gets bit, especially by those uh, bigger fish. So if you're around those, those bigger grade fish and you're trying to weed through those smaller ones, try upsizing your, your Mad Mac there. But yeah, super fun fishing. Uh, you get to cover a lot of water. So it's a great bait to drop way back there, cruise around, look for fish. Obviously we got a lot of blind strikes. We also got bit pulling it around the foamer. So when that bait's that far back, you can go around the foamer. Don't drive over the top of it because that's just gonna scare the fish, put them down. But you can drive around it and then straighten out and pull that Mad Mac through the middle of the foamer. And you know, if they're eating, they're gonna freaking chew that thing. Uh, we got bit doing that as well as the, the blind strikes. One thing I will say, um, having your line that far back obviously comes with its um, frustrations and uh, I guess a weakness of that is if it's busy out there and there's a lot of boat traffic. Um, it's not something you wanna do when you're trolling around other boats that have their kites up, um, anyone that's kind of drifting and bait fishing, you're gonna throw a big wake, you're gonna make a lot of commotion, you're gonna upset some people in the water. Um, so kind of keep your distance. It's not something to do through, you know, like I just said, some heavy traffic areas. Um, people are gonna run over your lines if you're going around other boats too close because your lines are way back there. A lot of people can't see the lines. If you're out on your own private boat and you see someone trolling at a higher speed, assume they're trolling a Mad Mac and they have lines way back behind the boat. So just give everyone their space out there, especially right now. You guys saw there's a ton of fish. There's plenty to go around and the fish will bite better if you guys aren't just running over the tops of other people's fish. Go find your own. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, as far as what pound test um these smaller ones i've trolled with 80 i wouldn't go less than 80 pound uh when you're you're going that fast i don't think the line diameter really makes a difference i don't think the bluefin are looking at the line diameter i could be wrong but anything less than 80 you're you're asking to get either bit off or you're going that fast your drags that tight you can also break the line um i've heard people trolling with like up to 200 pound but it's one of those things with these smaller ones you just want that bait to track correctly 
So if you have too heavy of a line on a smaller bait, it could blow out and won't run perfectly straight like it's designed to. Um, another thing for me personally and other people I've talked to is they don't like to use any clips to that Mad Mac. They tie straight to it, whatever your favorite knot is for that heavier line, tie straight to that bait. It's designed to run correctly that way. As you can see right here, there's that little, that little, I don't know, little insert that connects the this little ring to the bait actually wobbles as well. So adding like a big split ring on there or adding like a big clip can make that bait also blow out at those higher speeds. So just little tips for you guys when you're out there. Again, be courteous on the water guys. Pay attention uh, to people that are trolling. Don't run right over their, the back of their boat. If you see them trolling, spreader bars, Mad Max, anything with lines way back. If there's bluefin around, just assume people are trolling with lines way back. It's not marlin fishing. It's not third wake back. So. Keep that in mind, go out there, have some fun, catch some fish, but let's get in the fling. Nice, beautiful little you know, 25, 30 pound bluefin tuna. Um, Tanner did go and gut them for us, so we stuffed a bunch of ice inside the fish as well to keep it nice and cold. there and then I'm gonna go all the way up to behind the head right here so I don't miss any of this meat here and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side and then you just need to cut right through here and the head pops right off. So I'm going to remove those collars um, after I fillet the rest of the fish. <laughs> so much ice still in there. So I'm just going to set that off to the side right now. So we're just going to start by tracing right along the back here. So now that I've broken the skin a little closer. I can use my thumb to lift up the fillet and just kind of walk that knife all the way towards the center spine. Perfect. Now that the knife, you can hear it like ticking on the spine right there. With the head removed, you can see where that bloodline is. Right there. So you know exactly where to start. Just cut right into that bloodline. And then down towards the tail. Should peel right off. There we go. Beautiful piece of bluefin tuna. If you look right here, there is still a little bit of bloodline left, and it does go into the meat a little bit. So instead of just making a cut and removing all that and losing all that like edible meat here, I like to, when I chunk it up, then I'll just go in with a knife and clean out that bloodline. But let's set that off to the side. Right now for the bottom part here. Sorry, forgot you guys can't see, but what I just did is here's the spine and I'm just cutting over at an angle down just to separate that right there from the spine.
and then you can go from the belly split the belly right there cutting towards the spine See how it just pops off now. Super easy. Once you've done it a couple of times, it comes right back to you. This is the first one I've done since last year. It's like riding a bike though. There we have that bottom loin. Now all we have to do is just flip it over, do the same thing to the other side. Um, I'm gonna do that real quickly because it is, even though we have some cloud cover, it is getting a little warm out here this morning. Um, I'm gonna cut off the other side and then I'll show you how I like to portion it up. And I'm also going to, if you look in between all these bones right here, I'm gonna take a spoon and you can scrape all that out. And that's perfect for your spicy tuna roll, spicy tuna hand rolls. All of this stuff right here is still really delicious and edible. So I'm going to take a spoon, put that in a bowl, and then set that aside. All right, sorry, it wasn't recording for that first little cut there, but this is that top portion of that bluefin. All I did was cut down to the skin right here. Didn't break the skin, turn the knife, and you can skin it very easily just like that. So that's ready to be wrapped in the paper towel. Always wrap your fish in paper towels. It helps absorb any of the extra moisture or blood. And I change those daily up until I freeze the fish. But I'll show you guys that again real quick here. So I just kind of stake it out. Probably get four nice chunks off of this, this top loin here. Cut down to the skin, edge of the table. Makes it really easy to uh, skin that fish without having to cut the whole thing. And then you can see where the bloodline comes into the meat a bit right there. And it makes it really easy to use the knife and clean that bloodline off without missing. What the heck was that? Without missing um, uh, any of the, the edible meat. So it just makes it a lot more efficient so you don't waste anything. There we go. Picking up the speed a little bit just so this fish can get back in the fridge and stay cool. There we go. Just the skins left. Sorry about the no volume here. We had a bunch of people over and music playing and all that fun stuff for a little sushi party. But yeah, for the first dish, I just did the classic bluefin sushi. I uh, made some of that sushi rice with the little vinegar packets and then just cut the little strips of bluefin, threw it on top of the rice and let everyone enjoy.
But again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I appreciate everyone who subscribes and everyone I get to meet out on the water. Or if you see me out there, definitely say hi. We can talk fishing, talk loans, home finance, all that fun stuff. But yeah, thanks again, you guys. We will see you on the next one.